What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's D.H. Thorne here. Forgive the scruffy appearance. I'm actually at work, and you can kind of see <laughs> this during this time of the year, our uh, greenhouses and polyhouses are empty, so uh, I don't have as much work to do, so I have time to do videos like this. Um, I figured today I, I come out of retirement. <laughs> I'm not really in retirement. I've actually been really busy working on my book, Shadownomicon, so I haven't really had the mind, we'll say, to focus on any other occult matters or make videos or social media stuff beyond the occasional Facebook posts. So I do apologize for not posting a video this week, but hopefully this will make up for a little bit. A friend of mine on Facebook um, shared a really interesting blog post by VK Jahanam, uh, rehashing the old argument that um, the sigil most people use for Azazel is incorrect. Uh, most people are using the sigil of Saturn, and I concur that that is more or less accurate. Um, I'm not in any way arguing with VK. I think he's right about this. I think he's also right that it's time that we try to, we'll say, update the things that we use. Now, I, one of the things I liked about this, this blog post in particular, and I don't always agree with VK, and I have no problem with him, but we don't always agree on everything, uh, you know, nobody nobody agrees about everything, but I agree with him very strongly about a, several things in in this blog post he made. And one of the things he had mentioned that that really you know gives me a little respect for him in this in this area is that he admits that you know he's mistakenly used sigils before um, using you know used incorrect sigils and gotten valid contact with the spirit. Um, this inspires me to talk a little bit about something a little bit more fundamental. And important that people often overlook, especially when they're starting out on this path. People have a very mechanical, we'll say, um, opinion, a mechanical opinion, a mechanical um, idea, ideation of how magic works. That magic works only if you put the right elements together in the right order and do things a certain way. And I'm not saying that that's wrong in the sense that, oh, you can just do anything you want. What, there are rules. If you refer to my book, Become the Maelstrom, I point out that there are rules and limitations to magic, but those rules and limitations are less um, mechanistic. They're, they're less like physical laws and more like um, symbolic laws and self-awareness laws. So in other words, you know, going back to using chaos theory, chaos magic, I should say, you know, um, using the theories from chaos magic, it, it has a lot more to do with, you know, what your belief is in the symbol than the symbol itself. And I'm, I'm going to try to point this out a little bit. I'm kind of having a little bit of a loss for words here because I, can, I wrote it out, but the way I'm trying to say it maybe isn't as, uh, as organized. Um, in the ancient times, people didn't use typically sigils to contact spiritual entities. Um, you know, if you go way back uh, to the ancient times, what was most likely used were names, were words, um, how, whatever form of writing they use, you know, cuneiform, for example, they might have used that. Uh, they would have used the words, they would have used chants, songs, dances, and idols, okay? These were the symbols that they used to make connections to these spirits. And Azazel in particular, you know, in my channelings and workings with him, um, he's kind of, he has a good sense of humor when he wants to. And one of the things that he finds humorous is that we tend to be so fixated on superstitious uh, symbolism to the point where, you know, I've never asked him if it was the right sigil to use. I just used the Saturnian sigil like everybody does. It, it never really occurred to me that it might be wrong because in my magical theory, it almost doesn't matter. Any sigil is, is usable. Any symbol is usable. Now, will you have better results with a better sigil? Yeah, I think that that's a, that's, that's a valid uh, idea. I think that it's very valid to believe that, you know, a better sigil will yield better psychological and spiritual and psychic energy um, and concentration. I, I totally agree with that. I think that's totally plausible, at least for some people, if not universally so. But Azazel himself, you know, thinks a lot of this is silly because back in the ancient times, how would they, how would they invoke him in the ancient times? How would they have conjured him in the ancient times? How would they have worked with him? Well, they would have, you know, taken a goat up to a mountaintop and, uh, you know, <laughs> tossed it off and given it to him as a sacrifice to uh, have the sins of the uh, people forgiven. A very, a very Jesus-like, you know, martyr-like uh, scapegoat entity this Azazel is, is he not? 
um, given, you know, he, he, he's, he is the scapegoat. He's not just the one you give the scapegoat to. He seems to be the scapegoat even in our mythology in a way. Um, if you look at the, um, I'm getting off on a tangent here, but if you look at, you know, the, the Book of Enoch, you know, we see that um, it's Shem Yaza and all these other watchers, and then all of a sudden Azazel is given all the blame. You know, <laughs> suddenly he's the one who's blamed for all of the evil things that were done. Um, I guess because he taught mankind warfare, I think, is, the, is what most people think. They say, oh, well, he taught mankind warfare, so therefore, um, you know, God didn't want him to do that, I guess. You know? <laughs> I mean, I guess. That's, that's a possibility. I mean, the, the, the conflict between the entities in the astral world, between Yahweh and all these other entities, is valid and real. It does happen. They, it's not a conflict in the same way we think of it. You know, they're not sitting there, like, throwing down and fighting each other with fists. It's more of a conflict the way um, a high-pressure system moves into a low-pressure system and displaces the atmosphere, causing a storm. That's, that's more like what it is. They're not fighting. They're not at war, guys. It's, when they say they're at war, I mean, yeah, they kind of are. But they're not at war in a sense like there's casualties and damage and death. and That happens in the material plane. That doesn't happen up there. Okay, so when we're getting into it, you know, when we're, when we're getting on the subject of sigils for Azazel or any entity, um, you know, realistically speaking, the, I would often ask people, you know, just as a, just kind of like a, a question to, to validate or invalidate their belief, I'd say, where did the first sigils come from? Okay. Because I've had people confront me and say, well, if you're using the wrong sigil, you're not speaking to Azazel, you're, you're speaking to something else. Maybe you're speaking to, you know, Saturn, or maybe you're speaking to Azazel, instead of Azazel, the demon form of Saturn, as, as uh, VK rightfully points out. And this presupposes that the sigil is doing the work. If that is the case, where did the first sigils come from? And you have a chicken and egg scenario where you have to ask yourself, if sigils are the mechanism through which we make contact, which they're not, um, if they were the mechanism which made it possible, then it should be impossible for us to have any sigils because there should be no way for us to contact these spirits without the right one. And who knows what kind of weirdness we're actually contacting. So this is kind of bullshit. This is kind of, this is kind of superstitious nonsense. Um, and it has value to you if you believe in it. You know, and that's how it works. That's how all of this tends to work. You know, kind of like the opposite of the meme, that's not how this works. Well, that is how this works. This is, this is based on a kind of belief. Now, Yes, when you have enough people believing the same thing long enough, you kind of create a track in the ground, so to speak. You create a road, you create a path that is, that is well-traveled. And when you do that, this becomes more firm, more solid, and, and has more pressure in the spiritual world. So the more you believe in something, and the more people believe in it, the more power it has. So the fact that the majority of demonologers use you know, the wrong sigil for Azazel, wrong, um, means that it tends to morph and become his sigil, or there's, it, become, it, it just tends to work. Uh, it's not like it's not going to work. It's just, it will tend to be fine as Azel will respond to it, and so will Saturn. They're big enough entities they can share a picture. You know, <laughs> if we can share an alphabet to create different words, uh, you know, <laughs> we can share symbols too. It is possible. It's not like they can't, because the thing that's doing the work is you. It's your trance state. It's your energy state. It's your astral state. Your ability to to um, be a channel or be a medium. You know, your ability to be open to the spirit world and be able to tell the difference. And it's not always that easy. You know, as VK pointed out, and this, again, this is why I love this blog, is he points out that you, you can make a mistake and still succeed because, you know, nothing's perfect. You know, um, like, people will say, like, oh, well, I speak to this, this spirit all the time, and we have these in-depth conversations. And I often phrase it in a similar kind of, you know, uh, um, idea, like I'm sitting here talking to these spirits. And sometimes that's not what's happening at all. Sometimes I'm using a pendulum. Sometimes I'm using tarot. Sometimes I'm using a crystal ball. Sometimes I'm in a vision in a trance state, and I'm literally talking to them in a vision. My point is, is that a lot of times we will, we will fudge over um, what we're doing with them and say that we're talking to them when really it's just it's communication and it's divination and divination and communication is not 100% accurate if it was um, and maybe it is for someone or maybe a handful of people around the world maybe if I ever meet one I'll let you know but the vast majority of people it's it's better than an educated guess you know I would say that you tend to have a good record when you when you when you have a clear divination you can have a certain certainty about it and 
there are certain things that you can know. Like some people are better at divining um, people's intentions, and some people are better at divining locations of missing objects. And there's all kinds of things. Some people are more general. So you can have an ability to divine things and be accurate. And I would say you kind of follow the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% of the time um, you're going to be maybe wrong, but that 20% of the time that you're right is when it's really useful. Or 80% of the time you're right, but 20% of the time you're going to be really wrong. So you, it's, it's a fallible process. You know, it's not infallible. It's, it's, there is room for error. And the spirit world doesn't, it's not a machine. If you get it wrong, it will still work. It's more like people. You know, if, if, I, call, if I call my friend Dan um, by his, you know, if I have a friend who changed his name recently from Dan to Desmond, and I'm horrible at remembering calling him Desmond, and he doesn't get mad at me that I call him Dan all the time. So, <laughs> you know, go figure. Shout out to Desmond, by the way, if you're watching this. So I guess you might see my point here is that, you know, if you, if, if you call somebody by the wrong name, they'll still respond. If, if, you're, if you're directing the energy of your communication to the right person, they'll usually still respond to you, and they'll respond to you usually, you know, at least politely. They'll at least figure, oh, well, maybe you got it wrong. And because our ability to communicate with these spirits is less, we'll say, as clear most of the time, with exceptions, um, as it is with you and I, there's a lot of guesswork that goes into it, they might not correct you. In fact, they might not care, okay? They really might not care at all. And if they do correct you, it's going to be more along the lines of a way to improve your connection, not because you're wrong. So, you know, the spirit world is made of symbols and it is symbolic. However, there is some flexibility to that. It's not, it's not a crystal structure that cannot bend or move. It is a fluid structure that can, there's currents. This is why a lot of us working in these um, fields don't refer to them as the mechanisms or the laws. We refer to them as currents. You know, magic is, is, a, is a system of currents, not laws. Reality, material reality is a system of laws. The astral, the spiritual world is a system of currents. It's more like, it's more like sailing or swimming than it is, you know, uh, driving a car or, or um, you know, using a machine to build a, an object or something. It's not like using a computer. It's way more flexible than that. So there's probably some other things I want to say. Oh, and one other thing, just to put this in perspective, you know, what, what VK is calling Saturn, others would call, uh, I believe, Anshar, which is the name of Saturn from ancient Sumeria. So again, if he's going to, um, you know, make the point, and, and justifiably so, that using the sigil for Azazel, um, using the sigil of Saturn as Azazel is incorrect and we should stop, you could make a similarly valid case that we should stop calling it Saturn and go back to what the ancient Sumerians called it because that came first. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's necessary at all, but I'm not using that as an argument against what he's saying. I'm just trying to open your eyes to the idea that if we are doing magic and doing history at the same time, that's fair and well and good, but magic and history are not the same thing. You cannot say that just because something was said in history this way, that that means it has to be that way in your practice, necessarily. Because these entities are not their histories any more than you are. You, they may be a product in some way, you might be a little bit of a product of your history, but you are not your history. You are not 1984. You are whoever you are right now. That is who you are now. This is a kind of goes back to the uh, Asian, I don't want to get too far off into this tangent by the way, but give me a second. There's a little bit off into the tangent of karma this idea that people have of karma is incorrect. They think of it like justice and something like that. Karma is just causality. Karma is, is the path you're on right now. It is the direction you're going, and you are free to change that at any time. I often tell people that karma is kind of like seeing a rock in the middle of the ground, you know, seeing, seeing a rock on the ground ahead of you, a boulder, and running at it with the intention to kick it or without realizing you're going to kick it. So it's kind of like there's a rock in the ground in front of you. You're running at it full blast, and if you don't alter your course or change what you're doing, you're going to kick it and break your foot because maybe you don't see it or maybe you just don't care. But at any point between here and kicking that rock, you can change the direction. You can move your foot to the left or the right. You can stop in your tracks. At any point, you can change your karma. So the same thing applies you know, to this. There's misconceptions that people have, um, and history is not you know, exactly what, what things are. You can change at any point. You can decide tomorrow that you're a doctor and go out and learn to be a doctor. It may not 
work as easily for some people, but it is theoretically possible. Um, things can change, and they can change instantly, or they can change over time. So all I'm saying is I think VK made a really good blog post, and he, he explained it better than most other people. I've had this argument with people before, some people who've tried to confront me and say, oh, you're not contacting Azazel. No, I, I contact Azazel. I just might not be using the correct sigil. And that's perfectly fine. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not speaking to him because I don't think he cares. I don't think he cares what sigil you use. Maybe Saturn cares, or maybe Anshar cares. I don't know. But I don't think it really is something that we have to um, belittle one another over. But I do think that VK is right. It's time to, we'll say... Um, update the sigil. I think it's time that we figure out a way to to fix this problem so that there's less errors and mistakes going on, but without making others feel inferior over it, because I think that's foolish. I don't think that's the right way to do things. I think it's stupid. It's just another idol. It's like uh, it's like people getting mad for, you know, I don't know, not being Christian or something. You know, it's, it's the same kind of idea. Let's not turn this into a fucking religion, guys. That's not the fucking point of this. Let's not turn this into a religion. That's fucking stupid. This is a fluid practice of spirituality, and that's how it should remain for it to function the way it's supposed to function. The moment you start putting things in boxes and force them to be a certain way is the moment people are going to start having, well, just look at what Christianity has done to the world. Anyway, guys, this is D.H. Thorne signing off. Uh, again, shout out to VK. Shout out to my friend Desmond. Shout out to my other friend James on Facebook for posting what they posted. And I'll check you guys again soon. Um, hopefully I'll be doing another regular video. I think I'm doing a live stream tonight on Dark Sorcery. So if you guys are catching this, make sure you uh, catch that. And I'll try to put a link to VK's blog in the description. Well, thank you guys. Talk to you again soon.